Confession of an Ex-Satanist 4. This testimony is the fourth part in a series of four. Please read the other three parts. My return to Congo after my mission. After completing this mission, I traveled home to Congo where I went to see the devil in a hotel. Where he resided. He had the form of a rich young man. He received me and congratulated me. He gave me three more missions, with great promises and great rewards. He asked me to attack the church in Germany where I had already failed. He asked me to fight the revival churches in the Democratic Republic of Congo. I knew in advance that it was an impossible mission because the devil himself with his angels had tried to fight this church in Germany but without success. The devil knew I had a sign of God on my forehead, so he sent me to destroy the churches in the hope that God would reject me forever. One day when I was walking in the city, I saw a woman passing by and she was carrying a child. I noticed that the child had a light shining on his forehead. I knew it was a sign of God. I tried to destroy this child by grabbing his spirit with my astral hand, but I realized that the more I tried to take the child's soul, the more I became powerless and weaker. It was strange, I felt humiliated. After this experience, the devil appeared at my place and he was furious. He said, Why did you try to kill that child without my permission? He said to me, You have to relocate to a different house. I ended up leaving my home and moved to a new neighborhood, but I encountered another problem. I had a neighbor who was a Christian and his prayers blocked me. I decided to send him a power of seduction, fornication, and spiritual weakness, in order to extinguish his fire which was hurting and blocking me. Later he became an alcoholic and began sleeping with men. I became comfortable as his power diminished. My deliverance from red magic and my conversion. Then I traveled to France where I was invited by the representative of the Rosicrucian order for the exchange of knowledge and occult powers. I explained to them certain mysteries of Satan and the doctrine of Nosa. I asked them for some understanding of Rosicrucianism. I was told that everything started in ancient Egypt. But while we were talking, something happened in the middle of our conversation. A child whom I had killed in human sacrifice a long time ago appeared and he was dressed in white. On his garment was inscribed Jesus. When we saw the child, we were paralyzed. And we fell to the ground. There was a power emanating from this child and when he disappeared, we got up. The people of this sect of the Rosicrucian order questioned me about this event. I had no other choice than to lie to them that it was the devil himself who was testing us. I was confused. I knew that the child I killed was innocent. I was convinced that I had crossed the red line and I was filled with fear and reflection, I was restless and uncomfortable. The devil knew about this event and my state of despair. He invited me to travel to his kingdom so that he would explain what this event was all about. After a few days, Lucifer sent a flying machine that looked like a helicopter to transport me to his kingdom. When I arrived in Lucifer's kingdom, I was amazed by his royal castle. No royal family or president on this earth has wealth and luxury like him. There were many servants and maidservants, many goods, and his servants guarded them. I saw visitors from all over the world. The devil was receiving people from all the nations of the earth who were seeking power and wealth. I noticed that the servants and maids were very well dressed. It reminded me of the men in uniform of the Salvation Army. This royal palace was decorated with an exquisite and refined taste. In this castle, I met a woman who was called the Iron Lady. She is one of Lucifer's wives. Her power exceeds the power of all men. Then I was received and taken to the waiting room, and then the devil received me and gave me an explanation about the appearance of this child. He also gave me some assurances. A few days later, 
I went back to earth. I had my mystical sanctuary in the mountain. Near the bush where I was resting and isolating myself. I was in this sanctuary, and when I fell. Asleep I dreamed of the same boy who had appeared to us in France. The boy was like praying, then. He raised his hand and said, In the name of Jesus Christ. When he quoted the name of Jesus, the place where I was shaking and my sanctuary caught fire. I jumped out of my sleep, I was happy to see that it was just a dream, but a few minutes later I heard a sound like thunder and my sanctuary caught fire just as I saw it in the dream. Then a power seized me and projected me from the mountain and I became blind, I could not see anything. Some minutes later, Lucifer appeared. He assured me that everything was fine, but he lied to me saying that he was the one who had caused what happened in that bush around the mountain, but that was not the case. As a result of this event, I became ill and depressed. A few days later, I saw a modern vehicle and 18 people came out of it. They had advanced medical instruments that human medicine has not yet seen or invented. These people were sent by Lucifer and they treated me by giving me four injections. As a result, I was restored. A few weeks later, I had another dream. I saw the same child I dreamed last time. He announced to me the good news of the gospel. In the end, he said to me, My mission is over, I have come to preach the gospel to you but you want to kill me. So in that dream, I saw one of my demons. Stabbing this child and as he was dying his blood was spilling out in my room. I jumped from this dream, I was trembling. A few minutes later, I noticed that my flying carpet had disappeared, my star had disappeared, my ring and my magic necklace had also disappeared, and my uniform of the invisible world had also disappeared. In fact, I was an officer in the spiritual world of the devil. When I tried to contact the devil's kingdom, I noticed that all communication lines were cut off. I was about to leave the city when the devil managed to establish a communication with me. He ordered me to stay in the city and not to be afraid. He said he was deploying additional warrior demons for my protection. He ordered me to continue my activities, to cause deaths because I had to reach the determined number of 3,000 to become a millionaire. He then deployed 300 warrior demons for my protection. He knew that God's intervention in my life was not far off. I already felt guilty because of the church that I had destroyed and dislocated. I killed thousands of people by traffic accidents. I knew God was angry with me. I thought of seeking God's forgiveness. In the kingdom of darkness, they were suspicious of me. They thought that I was going to betray the devil. Days later, I received a visit from a friend. He came to tell me that a former Satanist from the Democratic Republic of Congo was testifying in their church. The Satanist served Satan for ten years. I was preparing to take refuge in this church. As I was preparing to go to church, the devil called me and told me to join him in the city of Point Noir. He told me that he would spend six months in the city to handle many problems. When I went to see him where he stayed at the hotel, I was escorted where he was. When I tried to reach out to greet him, he refused to shake my hand and asked me to sit down while he continued talking to other visitors. But while he was talking to other visitors he said to me, Felician, do you know that I love you very much? But you must understand that we are all going to end up in the lake of fire and sulfur because we have all been involved in murderous acts, so there is no difference between you and me, we have the same fate, which is the lake of fire and sulfur. Then the devil told me about a former Satanist who was testifying in the city. He said to me, I give you the mission to kill this agitator. All the Satanists and sorcerers in the city have been instructed to kill this agitator. After that, I went back home. 
the words that came out of Lucifer's mouth were. As sealed in my mind. He said that I was a murderer like him and that he and I had the same fate. And would end up in the lake of fire and brimstone. So, I became aware of the sins and crimes that I. Had committed over the years. I said to myself, what kind of master is this? I have served him from. My young age, I sacrificed thousands for him, I destroyed churches for him, but he does not know. Love. Later that evening, my friend came and took me to his church where the former Satanist was. Testifying. Before leaving for the church, Lucifer called me and insisted that I should kill the former. Satanist, whatever the cost. When we arrived at the church where he was testifying, I tried to capture his spirit but the former. Satanist was surrounded by fire. I could not do anything against him. I had no motivation to continue attacking him because I was already filled with guilt and I knew God was angry with me. I sat down and listened to the testimony and teaching gently. After the service, I went home, confused and depressed. I was having a nervous breakdown, and in the night when I was resting, I heard a voice speaking and quoting a passage from the Bible. Hebrews 4 7 Therefore God again said a certain day, calling it today, when a long time later he spoke through David, as was said before. Today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. The next day, I decided to confess my sins and give my life to Jesus Christ. Lucifer's statement that we are all murderers and we will all go to the lake of fire consumed my soul. The next day, I met the former Satanist and brought him books and magical instruments which he burned. We had a deliverance prayer session, then he prayed that the Holy Spirit would baptize me with fire. After my conversion, the news spread throughout the city. Many Satanists including those whom I initiated into magic came to try to convince me to change my decision. But my decision was final because it was a long-term goal for me to know Jesus Christ. The kingdom of darkness began to persecute me with various paranormal manifestations, but I was not afraid because I was already used to these things. Jesus Christ protected me and his peace filled my soul. I was not afraid of paranormal phenomena of the devil, I was already used to it. End of the testimony. Call to repentance. Catholicism. For you, dear friends, who, despite all the warnings that you receive from God, still choose to remain in the Catholic sect, know that if you stay there, it is in hell that you will spend your eternity. The Catholic sect has never been a church and will never become one. It is Lucifer's largest sect in the world. It is the mother of all the abominations of the earth. Your priests and bishops are all Satanists, and all the former Satanists who repent have never ceased to reveal it to you. As you have just learned from reading this testimony, the so-called Virgin Mary whom you worship is none other than Marie Margula, still called the Queen of Heaven and the so-called Jesus, whom you adore is none other than Saint Charlemagne, and both are only superior demons in Lucifer's kingdom. And even your Pope is known in the submarine kingdom as the only son. Are you not surprised that each Catholic temple, big or small, has a graveyard next to it? Cemeteries are one of the strategic places for them. They operate there at night as well as during the day. These cemeteries serve as gateways to the world of pandemonium. Catholicism is the religion of Satan. Only Satanists officiate there because to occupy any position, one must go through an initiation into witchcraft and magic. As you have just read in this testimony even the so-called charity works they do, are traps to catch innocent people to sacrifice to Lucifer. If you treasure your salvation, flee the Catholic sect and if you care about your life or the lives of your children, never again fall into the trap of accepting the so-called charities that Catholics do, and the so-called help they offer. All these are huge traps set against you. 
it's your life that you sell. To Lucifer in exchange for these aids. Remember once and for all that Satan never gives anything. For free. For you born-again Christians who preach the gospel to Catholics, remember this, all those Catholics to whom you have already explained, with the help of the Bible, that Catholicism is an abomination in the eyes of God, but who stubbornly choose to stay there despite the evidence you give them, and in spite of all these very clear testimonies that former Satanists put at our disposal. Our sorcerers, do not waste your time any more. These people are not in Catholicism out of ignorance. They are there by choice. Being sorcerers, they prefer an environment that will help them thrive in magic. Do not waste time believing that you can win them. You will not succeed. The few people who are in Catholicism out of ignorant, when you explain to them through the Bible that Catholic doctrine is purely satanic, they understand, repent, and leave this abominable sect. Those who have followed everything the Bible says about their doctrine, all that the former Satanists confess, but who stubbornly tell you that they are Catholic and will die Catholic, are dangerous Satanists. They know very well what they are doing. Stop wasting time preaching to such people, and beware of them. Other religious sects. In the same way that you must flee Catholicism, you must also flee all other religious groups that serve Lucifer. This is the case of Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, all those assemblies of sorcerers who dress in white and walk barefoot, and even some churches called evangelical or revived churches, but whose doctrine is not biblical, and whose pastors are Satanists. Importance of Spiritual Warfare Christians, the Lord has revealed to us the secret of victory. To be victorious against all these projects and other satanic attacks, we must live a life of sanctification, and lead a true life of prayer. It's time for you to wake up and take the fight seriously. If all Christians wake up, choose to become serious with God, and form prayer chains wherever they are, the whole church will be victorious. The call is launched. We must all wake up while there is still time. Make the effort to organize chains of fasting and prayers during the whole period from 24 to December 31st, to disperse this great satanic gathering that takes place each end of year, and during which all the decisions that we are subjected to are taken. Rather than falling into the trap of the world and feasting by shouting Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, fast and fight to strike and destroy those agents of the world of Darkness who come together to decide our fate. Products manufactured in the submarine world. Now that you know where most of the products you find in markets and supermarkets come from, be very careful about what you buy and what you eat. And for those of you who still eat meat, if you do not want to eat human flesh, only eat the meat of the animals you reared yourself. Do not send people whose spiritual nature you do not know go shopping for you. When Satanists do our shopping, the products they bring to us often do not come from the market. With all the revelations that God gives us, we must be more vigilant. Football and other worldly sport s for all of you who are still attached to football or other sports, and who are supporters of such or such other team, know that it is a worship that you offer to Satan by supporting teams composed of sorcerers, and by rejoicing over victories planned and decided in the world of darkness. What you have just read in this testimony will help you understand what I was trying to tell you about this famous Nigerian Satanist, mistakenly called a prophet, who accurately predicted the outcome of the 2012 African Cup of Nations competition between Zambia and Ivory Coast. The so-called prophet, who is a Satanist, had predicted that Ivory Coast would miss a penalty during the match and that Zambia would eventually win the game. Naive people had found in this a proof that this son of the devil would really be a prophet. He is nothing of that sort. It was not a prophecy at all. This Satanist is one of those participating in this worldwide meeting of Satanists in India. 
so he can freely give you information like this one. Precisely because all these results are decided during this meeting. This Satanist is not the only one. To know the results before the matches. Do not be fooled. For those of you, who continue to believe. That this Satanist is a prophet of God, know that a true prophet of God has much work to do than to. Occupy himself with trivialities like football. And God himself has enough to say to his people. Rather than launching into barren prophecies concerning satanic competitions, which will bring. Nothing to his disciples, and of which his disciples are even invited to flee from. Beware of hitchhiking. With all these multiple traps that Satan's world set for God's children, you must be very careful. 2. No longer fall into the trap of picking up on the road people you do not know. This Namibian pastor lost his ministry, his life, and that of his family, because of this act of imprudence and lack of discernment. Such cases should serve us as lessons. The danger of living with an agent of Satan. Beloved, no matter how cautious you may be, no matter how much you live a life of sanctification, no matter how much you lead a life of spiritual warfare in accordance with norms and following the teachings we have received, if you live with an agent of Satan, you will be a victim of attacks of the world of darkness. The agent of Satan with whom you live, will have time to exchange all your belongings with counterfeits made especially for you in the submarine world, he will have time to exchange all your food products with products from the underwater world, he will have time to exchange all your drinks with poisons made in the submarine world to destroy you and totally ruin your health, and even your life. As we've just read, foods and other food products that come from the underwater world, cause all kinds of health problems, and even diseases that become incurable. You must, therefore, take appropriate measures, while there's still time. Although it is recommended that we live together as brothers and sisters in faith, do not take the risk of living with someone whose spiritual life does not reassure you. You must, therefore, be extra vigilant and prudent. The infiltration of the churches by agents of Satan. As you have just read in this testimony, among the people of Evangelist Bonk's protocol, there was an agent of Satan, a woman who belonged to the world of darkness. This is how Satan always succeeds in infiltrating into the environment of children of God, through his agents. We must, therefore, be more vigilant and more prudent, and exercise all the discernment that the Lord has given us. Pastors and servants of God, pay attention to all those people who always like to be at the forefront, who always like to be involved in everything you do and be aware of all the decisions you make, and who want every time to be the only ones to do everything for you. These people are usually for the most part women. May the Lord grant us his revelations, grace be with you all who have Jesus Christ as Master.